In today's session, we'll discuss about uh, transform work order. Transform work order is a new concept added in uh, Fusion applications. We didn't have any similar feature in 11a or R12. So what it is, transform work order is used to transfer a finished code assembly into a different assembly by removing or adding some components. Uh, for example, suppose we have a laptop model as Dell 5480 and uh, we have on hand inventory for that so suppose 10 but now we got a demand for a different uh, product uh, say it is dell 6000 the components uh, you know the bomb structure for 5480 and 6000 is very much similar but there are few components which are different now because we don't have any on hand of 6000 what we can do we can transfer 5480 to, to 6000 by removing those components which are not required and by adding those components which are required for 6000. If I can go to the next slide, I can show you the structure. So if you see in the left hand side, over here, we have the structure for 5480. Uh, to make one sub-assembly or Dell 5480, we need various components, MIPUR001, MIPUR, it could be any other component, then MIPUR003. Similarly, the structure for MISA002 or Dell 6000 has MIPUR002, MIPUR some other components and MIPUR003. Now, as you can see, there are various components which are similar between these two sub-assemblies. MIPUR003 is same in both the products. There could be other components which are similar, but there might be very few products which are very few components which are different. Like in MISA001, we have a purchased item called MIPUR001. But in case of MISA002, we have a purchased component called MIPUR002. Now, initially, as I said, we have an on hand for MISA001 as 10, and there is no on hand for MISA002, and we got a demand, we got a sell setter for MISA002. So, what we will do? will create a transform work order and in the transform work order will issue MISA001 because you have on hand for that uh, that finished code or that sub assembly and to make MISA002 we also need a component MIPUR002 so we'll also issue these two these two products we'll issue one sub assembly or one finished code MISA001 and another extra raw material component that is MIPUR002 to the same transform work order and when the product is completed, we'll have MISA002. And also there will be a byproduct of MIPUR001. So when the product is completed, we'll be issuing these two materials, but there will be a negative issue because we'll be taking this material from MISA001 to the inventory. And of course, we'll be completing MISA002. So the two, the two inputs are MISA001, MIPUR002, and the two outputs are MISA002, which is the primary output, as well as there will be negative component written that will be MIPUR001. So when the product is completed, when the uh, work order is completed, we'll have the on hand as MISA001 as 9 and MISA002 as 1. So this will be reduced by one quantity and this will be increased by one quantity. Of course, if you see the on hand for the purchased items, the purchased item MIPUR002 on hand will be reduced by one quantity. Similarly, the purchase, uh, the on hand for this purchased item MIPUR001 will be increased by another one quantity. If you can go back to the previous slide. So this is the way in which you create a transform work order. Uh, as I said, we didn't have any such concept in R12. So in R12, what we used to do, if you have this kind of situation, then the best workaround was to create a non-standard work order. And in the non-standard work order, you, the problem was with the non-standard work order is that you can't complete it. Or even if you complete it, it's, it's not the best practice. So we used to add all those, you know, positive, negative quantities, which quantity will be issued, which quantity will be written in the, in the bomb. Uh, of the work order and then we process the transactions but here in cloud oracle has uh, this new feature called transform work orders where you can specify the finished product so this will be like misa002 that that's the product that will be finishing and it will be transferred from item the item that will be issued to this work order that would be misa01 and how many quantities you want to make so that will be one two three if, if you, you know if you got an order for 10 quantities then you might be uh, creating a transform work order for 10 quantities and once you enter all those informations you can save and close or click on save or edit button oracle fusion manufacturing provides various capabilities to facilitate transform work order 
and some of the key points are that for transform workorder it is not necessary to have a transform workorder definition you can create you know if if you have if you are in into a business where uh, the transform workorder is a regular practice you do it on a you know, regular basis then you might create a transform workorder however that's not required you can also use transform workorder fun functionality without having a work transform workorder definition you can manually create uh, the work definition or the bomb structure the items which will be added and which will be removed on the work order itself we'll see that in, in next couple of sites as well as in the system uh, you can also pro specify transform from work order like uh, the one you can see over here so this is this is the transform from work order which will be issuing to the work order and you can specify negative quantities to work order for operation items like uh, this one here this will be mip or 001 will be negative because this component is used in s001 but once we convert to s002 this component won't be required anymore so we need to negative do a negative transactions to remove that component from the product to the inventory uh, the same item can be used uh, in two different sequences one as positive and one as negative if if uh, if you have a situation like that where you have uh, the same item with uh, different serial numbers or the different grades that you need to one needs to be added and one needs to be removed you can do that you can have two different item sequences in material transactions material negative issue transactions are supported to transact items with negative quantities so when you do transactions if you see in case of uh, again you know going back to r12 or 11i you have to select the transaction the transaction can be a component issue component return or negative component issue or negative component return but in cloud as a technician as an operator the person who is doing the transaction they don't have to worry about it they don't have to select the right transaction if the you know the engineer or the production supervisor has created the bomb structure correctly if they have created the work order correctly then the technician or the operator who is doing the actual work you know after doing the physical work who will be doing the transaction in system they just have to do this uh, transaction and system in the background can find out what is the correct transaction whether it is needs to be a issue or it is going to be material negative negative issue the genealogy of rework uh, rework assembly can be reviewed for serial tracked uh, rework order so if you have uh, uh, if you're transforming from one serial number to another serial number then you can review the details uh, how which serial number is issued and which serial number was completed so this is the entire end-to-end -end process for a transform work order uh, first we start with the creation of a transform work order and uh, the item availability in the inventory will be upgraded to a different item so for this one we are transforming from SS001 to SS002 so we need to have uh, make sure that we have enough on hand quantities for MI SS001 so that it can be transformed to SS002 uh, next uh, we let me go back yeah so we create the work order then we uh, start executing the work order so there are various steps in the execution the first step is we components uh, we do negative issue transactions you know all those components which are not required or which will be removed out of the out of the product will be done as part of uh, component return and similarly there might be few components which needs to be issued to the product to the work order and those components will be issued during the transform work uh, transform work order execution and finally when the product is complete when you have removed all the components that is not necessary and have issued all those components which are necessary to make the product will complete the work order and once the work order is completed the new finished good the upgraded version of the finished good or the downgraded version of the finished good will be available in the system so at the end what will happen system will increase the on hand of this one mis002 to, to 1 and mis001 to it will reduce the on hand of mis001 to 9 Uh, this slide shows the product structure so before uh, going into work order and creating the work order uh, we need to make sure that the product structure is complete so first we'll create a uh, assembly or a sub assembly or we'll use an existing assembly and we'll make sure that the item structure are correct that means there are some similar components Th there is no point in uh, transforming an order where the components are not similar if that is the case where the product uh, the components are uh, not similar at all then what you can do you can do the disassembly for the first finish code and then you take back all the components to the inventory and then do an normal standard work order for the other product 
but if there are some common components you need to make sure there are some some common components before using the uh, using it for transform worker so as you can see for this uh, product mis001 we have two components one is mipur001 mipur003 and similarly for uh, the product mis02 we have uh, two sub uh, two components one is mipur002 and another is mipur003 so mipur003 is the common component the different component is mipur001 and mipur002 so when you transfer from mis01 to mis02 will be issuing will be required to issue this product and will need to do a negative component issue for mipur001 the other thing that we need to make sure that we have enough on hand quantity so right now if you see i did a query for uh, uh, the on hand quantities with starting uh, sub assemblies starting item number as mi underscore sa and right now we have on hand quantity of 10 for si01 and you don't see anything for si02 because si02 because there is no on hand the on hand quantity is zero so right now we have only on hand for mi sa01 and when we complete the transform work order, then the MISH root one hand will be increased by one. So this is the way in which we create uh, the work order. So first we have to go to the transform work order form and then we enter all the basic required mandatory informations such as the item number MISH 2 then the quantities, how many quantities we are transforming and then, then the transform from item. This is the item which will be issued to the work order. Now, note one thing that don't expect that if you just putting by transform from from item system will automatically issue that item. You have to issue that item. So this item should be part of your uh, work order structure. We'll see that later. But uh, I have seen you know several questions on Oracle support that I have uh, created a transform work order with transform form item as MISA01, but system didn't issue that item. No system doesn't do that by default. You have to enter it a transform from item as well as you have to enter it in the item structure as this is the component that will be issued to the work order. Then you have various other fields which are not mandatory but you can enter them such as the work order number. If you don't ent enter any work order number then system will automatically generate a work order uh, with a specific sequence. The first segment is usually uh, the organization's name then or the organization's number then you can have uh, a unique sequence it's it's you can define how the system will generate the work order uh, you can put it in description if you want similarly the status it will be initially in on released but while creating you can also put it on hold status because if you are not sure uh, whether the the technicians or the operator should start working on this work order then you can create a work order with hold status on hold status uh, then start date and completion date if you want you can you have to enter them manually because as this item uh, we are creating doesn't have an work definition so you have to enter both the dates uh, manually if you have a proper bomb structure like for a normal work order so when you enter one of the dates then system will use the lead time to find out the other date so if you are entering start date system will use the lead time to populate the completion date of you or if you are entering the completion date then system will be using the lead time to find out the start date but for this case there won't be any calculation system doesn't have any lead time information so you have to manually enter both the start date as well as the completion date and completion date is the date system will use for the planning purpose you know system will do the backward scheduling starting from the completion date to find out all the raw components uh, requirement and when those raw components needs to be if required to be purchased then on what date they needs to be purchased a uh, subtype subtype is a new kind of field in uh, in cloud application so this actually doesn't do anything except uh, it's it's just used for reporting purpose so if you want to classify your work orders in various subcategories then you can use the subtype uh, work definition as i said it is not necessary to have transform work order unless you do it on a regular basis if it is that is the case if you do transform work orders from one assembly to another assembly on a regular basis then you can create uh, one work definition as transform work order definition and you can select that over here and if you enter uh, the if you have uh, uh, a work definition as transform work order and if you select that over here in the name then system will populate the item structure so in that case you don't have to manually maintain the item structure for the work order uh, so once you have entered uh, everything system will show you this page the final page where you can see the status is unreleased when is it is started when it is completed and the product details MISA02 is the product that we are 
going to complete and MISO01 is the product which will be going to issue. So it will be transforming from MISO01 to MISO02. And once it is done, as I said, if you are not using any any work definition over here, then you have to manually enter the structure. So the first thing is you have to add an operation. So for this case, I have manually added one operation. You click on the plus sign over here as operations, addition for operations, and then uh, system will show you the operation details and you can add it uh, manually. And once the operation is added, then you have to manually add all the components, all the components that will be issued or negative issued from that uh, work order. So here you see the item is zero right now. We don't have any items. So we need to click on this and then system will allow us to add the items. So here we are adding all the components that will be used or will be written from this work order. So the first one is MIS01. This will be issued because this is the uh, sub assembly which will be using or which will be transferred from SI01 to 02. Similarly, MIP02 is another component which will be issued because this is not available in MIS01. And then thirdly, MIP01, which is not required in MIS02, but it exists in MIS01. So we need to remove this component. So this will be minus one. So we'll have three different uh, lines in the structure. One will be two will be positive, MIS01, MIP02, and one is negative issue as MIP01. And the supply type, you can pull, uh, put all of them as push, pull, or assembly pull as, as, as your uh, business requirement and finally the resources if you if you are using a standard operation then system will pick the resources from that operations but if uh, you know you need some extra hours you need some extra resource for that specific purpose then you can also add resources over here so this the plus sign where if you click system will show you one more row where you can select uh, the name of the resource how many quantities are required and what is the unit of measure will default from the resource name and whether it is scheduled or not and what is the charge type you can always put it this automatic or uh, manual so once you entered all the uh, item informations resource informations uh, then you can go uh, you can save the work order and uh, go back to the home page so now if you go to the uh, dispatch list in the dispatch list you can see the work order is ready so here is the work order the new work order we just created work order 002 hyphen 1003 so this work order is now ready for, for transaction and here you can see this is uh, when you see this kind of symbol with uh, uh, a pencil mark uh, with the background of uh, a page that means it needs some manual uh, transactions and if you are seeing this symbol that means it is everything is auto transacted so for the resources is auto transacted for manual we have to manually do some transaction uh, so click on that and before that also this you know you can either go directly to the review dispatch list and uh, search for the work order or the other option is that when you open the work execution page in the work execution page we have something called operations info light and in the operation operations info light you will see a new work order is ready and if you click on that uh, one sign or there might be two three four so if you click on that then system will take you to this review dispatch list so the review dispatch list can be accessed in you know various ways uh, for technicians and operate operation operators it is usually advisable just to use the info light instead of going into this review dispatch list and enter all the information and search for it they can just go to the operations and then click click on click on the ready uh, ready uh, symbol over there now next we need to report the material transaction that means we need to issue whichever material is required uh, to be issued and we need to remove uh, those materials which are not required now this step is a bit different from r12 if you are coming from r12 because in that case, we have to select the type of transaction, you know, whether it is a issue or return or negative issue, negative return, all those transactions. So here, if you see, we have issue return. We don't have any negative issue or negative return. So when you are saying issue and if it is minus one, that means system is going to do a negative issue. If it is a plus one, we'll have a positive issue. So the technicians and operations uh, operators doesn't have to really change anything over here. They just select the lines they want to transact and then click on the set button and uh, transact button or if you are using a scanner and if you don't want to use uh, you know if you have some extra components then you can scan the component over here and then click on the done button so once you scan and click on the done then the details will be available over here and it will be available for transaction and once you complete the transaction then you will see if you go back to the dispatch list initially it was this sign you know but now when it is completed you will see this um, tick mark that the review dispatch list is not completed 
and the other option the other thing that is spending is only this one the resources but because the resources are set for automatic transactions so we don't have to do any manual transaction for that uh, next we can do the direct work order completion because uh, the as i just mentioned the resources are for automatic transactions so we don't have to do any manual transaction in cloud application we can do completion in two different ways one is quick completion and the second option is uh, completion with details so this screenshot is showing how a complete with uh, details is done in system so to do complete details uh, first to select the work order and then select the checkbox as complete with work with details and system will show this page where you have four different stages to go through first uh, stage is product where you can review the product details and it will show you for that specific work order like this is the work order number what is the item number on what date the transaction you are doing the transaction and what is the current transaction status like how many are completed how many are rejected and how many are you know, scrapped and this is the quantity that you are uh, trying to transact so if you are trying to you know, transact five quantities then you select five over here if you're transacting any one quantity then select one over here then click on the next button and system will take you to the backflash materials page so if you have any component which is uh, set up for backflash or if you want to manually add some components before you complete the work order then you can add it over here if something is over here you want to transact it then you can backflash or you can issue those materials to the work order and next we need to do the resource transaction so in the resource transaction system will show you all the all those resources which are uh, uh, set for auto transaction so you can see over here like uh, the operation sequence tens we have the resource as technical le level two mm -hmm. a type of labor and how many quantities so everything is fine if you want to edit anything then you can change it over here suppose your standard operations needs uh, 100 hours of work but actually this job took some extra hours 120 or 130 then you can change those timings the number of hours over here and uh, click on the next button and the next is the final uh, page where you uh, do the completion and you specify which area you are going to complete it which specific sub inventory and locator of course if the item is lot controlled or serial controlled then you have to specify the lot and serial number informations so the first column over here is the number of items that you are completing second depending on if it is lot or serial you have to enter those informations finally the serial the sub inventory where you are completing it and if it is a locator controlled sub inventory then you also need to enter the locator number and then click on save and close so once the transaction is completed once the work is completed uh, you can go back and review the transaction so now here if you open the work order again you'll see the status is completed and the progress this uh, uh, column over here it will be with a green checkbox that means that work order is now completed it is not yet closed but it is completed that means whatever transactions are required all those material resource uh, issues have been completed as well as the work order is completed and we can check the on-hand inventory for the two items and here if you see the MIS01 which we used uh, for the product we issued to the work order and now the on-hand is reduced from 10 to 9 and for the other item the item that for which we created this work order uh, so MIS01 is transferred from and MIS02 is transferred to so now the MIS02 has on-hand increase from 0 to 1 so the process is completed in terms of operations but if you think in terms of finance it is not yet done so what we need to do we need to run a couple of uh, transactions to uh, sorry a couple of programs to bring all these inventory and whip transactions to the costing model so that the distribution can happen in the costing so there are two programs the first program we need to uh, tra transfer all the transactions from inventory to costing and the second program is transfer transactions from production to costing so transfer transactions from, from production to costing takes all your resources take care of all your uh, resource and overheads that you have charged to the work order and transactions from inventory to costing take care of all the material transactions from inventory to work order or from work order to inventory so suppose you are doing a material issue or material return or uh, material completion all those transactions are happened in inventory and you need to run this program transfer transaction from inventory to costing to bring all those transactions to the costing where you can do the distribution and uh, as i said the other part is the resource and overhead the cost those are coming those are transferred from uh, productions to costing so you need to run these two programs there is no dependency you can run this one first or this one second uh, or you can run this one first so there is there is no dependency but you need to run both the programs before you go to costing and in the costing module you have to run the create cost accounting distribution program and when you run this program cost accounting distributions you have to uh, 
uh, give the various parameters like for which uh, financial book you are running it and for which operations you are running it or you can run it for all the operations and also when while running these two programs transfer transaction from productions to costing as well as transfer transaction from inventory to costing we have to select the cost organization here and in this case uh, production to costing we have to select the organization so select the correct organizations system also allows you to run these programs with all the organizations so you can select that of course that will take more time to run and if you are scheduling this program to run for a specific organization then you can select the organization's name in the in the parameter and once you run the create distribution program system will create the distribution for all these transactions i'm not going through the details of the distributions if you are interested then please check out the costing uh, training module because there we go through all these processes uh, for each of the transactions what kind of distribution system uh, creates uh, from where it picks the debit account credit account how the costing takes place for average standard uh, uh, all the various costing methods that we have in in uh, cloud applications i'm not going through the details over here but as you can see once the costing program is run system will show you the organizations the book uh, if you don't understand what is a cost organization and cost book i just said it's not part of weep please check the costing training session but basically what you can see that for all the transactions Weep uh, material issue or uh, Weep resource trans transactions, Weep production completions, all those transactions have been successfully distributed. It is not yet uh, accounted because we haven't run the create accounting program. So after distributions, we have to run another program called create accounting, which existed in R12, not in 11A. We have to run that program. So once the program is, is uh, both the programs are completed, system will create journals. The journals will be different for each of these transactions so for uh, material issue of course the evaluation will be debited and inventory valuation will be accredited similarly for uh, resource transactions the resource the we valuation will be debited and uh, resource overhead absorption account will be credited for uh, process completions the inventory will get debited and we valuation will get credited for we negative transaction so for all these transactions you can see the cost distributions over here and similarly if you click on the journal entry tab system will show you the specific journals that is created as part of this program when you run the create accounting now let's go to system and uh, try to do a end to end business scenario for uh, transfer marketer first we'll go to the uh, item structure form where we will review the structure for these two assemblies and we'll uh, see that uh, the components are most of the components are common but there will be few unique components between the two sub assemblies and after that we'll create we'll go through the entire process of uh, uh, transform work order so we'll start from the creation but first let's go to this page and check the product structure so let me go to Oracle cloud application review the item structure we have to go to product management and then click on product information management system will take you to this page uh, this is the module uh, if you are not aware of uh, uh, cloud applications this is the module in which you maintain all the item level information so it is not in inventory what we used to have in R12 and then click on this uh, search button and then click on advanced search so if you click on advanced search then you can search for multiple items uh, at a time so what you'll do will uh, search with item starts with mi underscore essay okay i have to change my language setting okay and then click on search button i have already created these items so it should exist in the system uh, we also have different training sessions on item creation so if you're interested in how the pi model works and how, how item are created in fusion applications then please check out those uh, those sessions so this is the list of all the items which starts with mi underscore sa what we entered in the search criteria uh, we want to review it in uh, one of the manufacturing plant in us that is uh, 002 so let me open this item in 002 for mi sa01 and uh, this uh, item form will show all the details of the item uh, but what we are interested in is uh, the item structure so i'll go to the structure tab and review the existing structure so there is only one structure right now productions so review the structure click on the production button so now here we can review the details of the item structure so we have two different components mipur001 and mipur003 and both are used for one quantity. So to make one finished good or subassembly MI SA01, we need two different uh, products, MIPUR01 and MIPUR03, and both are required one unit. Uh, next, I'll open the item structure for a different subassembly that is MI SA02. So let me go there. 
and we also need to make sure that we are opening in the right organization so here is 002 so i'll open over here again same thing to open the item click on the link the item number system will take you to the item page here the all the item details but again we'll check on the structure tab and review the structure uh, it seems like this item doesn't have any structure so what we can do we can create a new structure for this item and so to create a new structure click on this plus sign system will show you a pop-up screen where you have to select the kind of structure that we are creating we will create it for us uh, for the primary structure so please select uh, the name as primary and then click on apply and add details and then system will take you to this page where you have to add all the components that is part of this MISO02. So we'll have one com component as common. So let's say MIPUR03 uh, as the common component. I'll select uh, search with MI and it will show me all the items with MI. So we'll select 03 as the common component and we'll have one more uh, different component that is MIPUR02. So select both the items and click on apply button and once it is applied click on ok if you want to uh, change the quantities then you can click on edit and add so now this is added so if i can go back to the other tab uh, okay before that let me just uh, save this so click on done and then save button okay. and now if you go back to the structure form system will show you the details so here we can see the structure we have two different components so pur002 and pur003 and this is for misa02 we have these two components and if i go back to misa01 we can review the structure for misa01 so it has 01 and 03 so the, so the only common component is mipur003 so when you transfer from misa01 to 02 will be issuing 002 and we'll be taking out MIPUR 001. Uh, let me go back to the presentation. Okay. So this uh, part is complete. We have reviewed uh, the product structure. Uh, next, we'll check the on-hand inventory before going, uh, proceeding further with the transaction. So let's uh, go to inventory and uh, check the on-hand quantity. To check the on-hand quantity, we have to go to inventory. So that is part of supply chain Execution. So click on supply chain execution and then inventory management. And here uh, in the tasks, click on tasks and then manage item quantities. It's manage item quantities, though you really don't do any kind of transactions. It's not management, it is kind of reviewing the item transactions. And here we can search with item number or various other mm, parameters. Uh, but what we'll do because we want to review it in organizations too. So I'll say change the organizations to 002. And item starts with MIPUR, not MIPUR, MISA. Because PUR are the purchase uh, items. We are not interested. We just want to review the uh, finished goods. So right now we have 9 and 1 because. Uh, to make the presentations, I did one transaction and that's why it is changed from 10 to G, train 0 to 91. Now we have 91. So when you finally transfer from SA01 to SA02, so the on hand will be 2 and uh, the on hand for this one will be 8. Uh, next is to create, a create and process the transform work order. So let's, uh, let me go back to the system again and create a new work order. Work orders are created in manufacturing module. So click on the manufacturing module and then on work execution. In work execution, click on uh, tasks and then manage work orders. Now here uh, is the trickiest part. If you directly click, click on this plus sign, then system will take you to a normal standard work order. But we are not going to create a normal standard work order. We are going to create a transform work order. So while clicking on this plus sign, make sure that you don't click on this plus sign because if you just click on this plus sign, system will take you to this page. Rather click on the list of values option in the right hand side of the plus sign so here you see there are an option so if you click only on this uh, list of value or the uh, down arrow mark then system will show you all these four options and from here you have to select the transform work order create transform work order if you just click click on the plus sign then system will take you to the create standard work order so to create the transform worker select that option 
and system will show you the pop-up screen for the transform work order. Both the forms look similar. The only difference is in case of transform work order, you'll have a transform from item number, which you have to enter. It's a mandatory field as you can see over here. And if you want to see the details, you click on the show more, then system will show you all the fields over uh, in this uh, create work order form. So let's select, uh, we are uh, going to uh, transform from 001 to 002. So the final assembly is MISA002 and we are, uh, we are transforming it from MISA001. I think it is MISA02, not uh, 002. Similarly, this one is 01, not 001. And here you can enter a work order number. Uh, it's not necessary, but let's say we want to have our own number. So let's select this as MI002000 and we can put a description over here. If required, if you want to put some nodes, if you want to give something, some information to your technicians or operators, you can put the name over here. Then quantities, how many one quantities you want to transfer? Let's say one, we want to transfer one quantities. And as I mentioned during the presentation, you have two options. One, you can select the starters as unreleased or on hold. Most of the times you'll be creating uh, unreleased, but there might be some business requirement, business situations where, you know, the person who is responsible for creating the transform work order is not allowed to take it to the unreleased starters, or you have some kind of approval process. You know, one person is responsible for creating transform work orders. Then you have another engineer or a supervisor who will change the starters to unreleased. And then the technicians or the operators will start working on it by changing it to release starters. So it's a business requirement, but most of the times, as I said, for normal requirement, you will have the starters are unreleased. So let's select this as unreleased and the completion date, if you want to enter something, otherwise system will take the start date and will make same as the completion date because there is no late time. Similarly, subtype, if you want to, uh, you know, for various reporting purpose, if you want to use this subtype, you can use it. So normally it won't be a standard or a prototype or a repair. It should be something like a transform order. We don't have, so let's select this as a, uh, test log and then the work definitions if you have a work definition for that item mis02 as transform order then you can select over here it's not necessary that you need to have the work definition name as transform but it is quite uh, you know standard to have a work definition as as uh, transform work order we don't have anything so i'll just click this uh, keep this spring i'll keep this field blank and i'll click on save and close so now the work order is created and Okay, so this name already exists, so I have to select a different, maybe I'll just change this to 2000. Yeah, so if you're manually entering, system will do the validations. If you don't enter anything, then system will pick the next available sequence. So it's usually good practice to let the system uh, use the existing number. So now this is the details, the worker is created and you can see the details over here. System will take you to this page and it will show you that the worker is created. Uh, but if somebody else is responsible for uh, managing the work order, they can do the same thing. They can go to the tasks and manage work order and search with the work order number or the item number and system will show the details for this work order. Now here from this page itself, you can release the work order. You can release and pick materials. You can do various, uh, you know, you can change the status of the work order. And, uh, but the other option is you click on the work order and view the details because right now we haven't added any material or any resource to the work order. So I'll click on that. But before that, I want to show you something that the completion date, you know, as I said, we entered only the start date because the lead time is zero. So system populated the completion date as same as the work date and the status right now, we haven't started anything. So the status is not started with a small blue colored uh, square box. Now to review the item, uh, the work order details, click on the work order number system will take you to the work order page where you can review the details as well as we can uh, modify the routings and uh, add various components and resources. Now this is the status right now it is unreleased we can now release it uh, and uh, before releasing it we should have added all the all the components uh, but here how we'll do the release but uh, before doing the release status let's first go to the operations tab and add the operation. So what I'll do I'll add an existing standard operations so to add a standard operations, click on the plus sign, because if you don't add any standard operations, you have to manually add all the resources. So which uh, will need extra effort. So I'll just select one of the existing uh, standard operations. So we have something like uh, update, which makes more sense because we are updating or we are transforming from one uh, product by another product. So I'll select that. Uh, that standard operations and system will take whatever is the resource requirement at that specific standard operations for this job. 
so now that is done so you, here you can see we see we added the operations because it was a standard operation system took all the resources that is required for this operation so if i click on the resource link system will show the resource details and here you can see this is the name of the resource technicians level and 100 hours are required but here of course you can change it so suppose uh, the standard operations is 100 but we know for this specific transform work order we will be requiring 150 hours so let's change it to 150 and the charge type you can change uh, the default value is automatic but you can have it manual so if it is manual you have to manually do the resource transaction if it is automatic when you complete the work order system will uh, do the transactions for you so you don't have to manually charge any resource to the work order so this concept is same as what it was in r12 you know we had the option of manual or automatic resource transactions uh, once you change it you know i'm not changing it for this uh, work order so let's keep it as automatic and then click on ok button and of course you have another option so here you see system is showing there is only one resource that is the resource name and how many hours if you want to add one more resource manually you can also do that so here you have to click on the plus sign and then give a resource uh, sequence name let's say the resource 20 and what what is the resource is doing what is the resource name so let's say lcd panel assembly equipment this is just for testing so i'm picking up any resource and this resource we need for 50 hours i'll select as 50 hours you have to enter the usage rate as well as the required usage rate and as soon as you enter that then system will pick up uh, the charge type from the from the resource name yes, but you can of course change it and scheduled yes or no uh, right now this one is no but for this one we are selecting at a gs and click on ok button so now you can see two different resources are over here one is technician another is lcd panel uh, this is showing how many hours are required and uh, the red you know symbol over here is showing how many has actually been issued so right now nothing is issued so it is showing zero when the work order is completed we can come back and review then system will show that's 150 150 the 50 will be 50 50 and the other thing that lives in this form is to create uh, the item structure as for, for this work order so to do that click on the items button so right now as you can see the zero there is no items are assigned so we need to assign three different items first is we will be issuing the misa zero item so that's the first component we will be issuing to this product misa zero one and how many quantities will be issuing we will be issuing only one quantity and next uh, so here if you go scroll to the right you can see how many quantities required is one then when it is required the supply type push pull operation pull assemble pull bulk uh, we'll keep it as push uh, this is same as exactly r12 uh, if you don't know the details please check the other sessions where you have detailed explanation about uh, the various supply types and how they works uh, behaves in in, in uh, various transactions and then the other uh, options we have over here from where uh, the push will happen whether it will happen from store or from a different sub inventory that we specify over here in the supply sub inventory area uh, next is uh, we'll add the other two components so mi pur zero uh, 01 which we are going to take out from mas01 so that will be a negative on hand uh, sorry negative uh, transacted quantity Okay, so now MIPUR001 is the quantity which you are going to remove from MIS01. It is not going to be utilized to make MIS02. So the quantity per transaction will be minus one because we are going to do a negative issue from the whip to the inventory it will increase the inventory on hand and the other item that is the extra item that is required to make uh, mis02 is mipur002 because 3 is the common component we don't need to issue any 3 3 will be coming from here so this will be a positive one and once you enter all the informations click on ok and you'll see the system will show you the three items that is required to uh, complete this work order so now you can see the three items and how many quantities are required the quantities are one plus one minus one plus one and here how many have already been issued it's same as zero for the resources right now we haven't done any transaction so once this thing is complete then click on save and close and now the work order is complete but it is still not available for dispatch because the status is still unreleased so we can release it from this form or we can go back to the same form and uh, release it from there so how we release it we just change the status to released and then click on save and close 
So once this is released, now this job is available for dispatch. Uh, normally, it will be done by some technicians or operators. They have to log in with their login ID and password, but I'll use the same login. So if I now go back to the overview page, here I can see that operations number will increase. So here we see the, the operations. Now we have one job which is ready for uh, operation. So I can directly click on over here, the ready. The other option is you can go to tasks and here you can search for uh, operations review dispatch list. This click, you can click on the review dispatch list over here or you can directly click on this. So I'll just click on over here and system will take me to the same review dispatch list. And this is the work order that we just created. It is now available for dispatch. And as you can see, the uh, symbol over here, the manual reporting is required for the components because everything we put as push and for, but for the resources, manual reporting is not required because we made all the resources as auto transaction. If it was manual transactions, then you have seen, you know, it, it system would have shown you that manual reporting is required. So right now the manual reporting is required only for the components, not for the resources. And here you see the other details, details for the work order, like uh, the status is ready, the work order number, uh, then the item which is finally completed and uh, in which work center it is, uh, it has been processed. So first to do the material transactions, click on here, the manual reporting required and system will take you to the material uh, transaction form. So here is the report material transactions and it is showing us all the three components. So now we can directly save and close and system will do with the transactions. This is very simple compared to what we had in 11 and R12 because in that case you have to select the transaction type and then uh, if it is uh, you know negative issue or uh, uh, component return or negative component return. There are various options you have to select, but it is simplified over here because system will check what is the quantity. Is it minus one? If it is a minus one, system will do a negative issue. And if it is a plus one, then system will do an issue. So when you review the transaction in the inventory, you can see the system will pick the correct transaction type. You don't have to select the transaction type. The transaction type is either issue or return. It is not issue and negative issue or issue uh, return or negative return. So now it is much simpler for the technicians or the operators to do their job. And next, if there is an extra component which is not added, but if you want to add it over here, then you can you know, scan scan that component and then click on the done button. But we are not doing that, so I'll just click on save and close button, save and close button. So the components are now issued. So if you go back to the review uh, dispatch list, here we can see the checkbox. This manual re reporting is completed, and of course in the uh, header system will show you the message that the material transactions were reported for work order. This is completed now because there is no resource transaction, you know, there is no requirement to do any manual resource transaction. This job is kind of ready for completion. So, what do we have to do? We have to click on this uh, arrow mark over here to review the option for completion. So, we'll get two different options one is quick completion, where system will do the completion as per the entered quantity over here, or the other option is to complete with details, where we have the option of. Uh, changing the resources and as well as the materials before you do the completion. So let me select on that complete with details and here system will default all the values from the work order such as the item number, uh, when we are doing the transaction, it will be the current date and time, then how many quantities you are transacting and what is the work center and how many operation transactions summary, how many have already been transacted, you know, completed or rejected or scrubbed if you have anything because right now we don't have anything, all these uh, fields are zero. So once you review the details, click on the next button and system will take you to a page where you can review the materials. For us, all the materials have already been transacted. But if you want to add some extra material, you can do that. If you, before completion, if you realize you know, some extra components have been added uh, for this work order, then you can click on the plus sign and uh, select all the details for the work orders. Uh, not required for our purpose, so I'll just ignore it and click on the next button. Similarly, here you can see the resource transactions. All these transactions will be automatically transacted when you complete the work order because all these are set as automatic. So we don't have to do any transaction. I'll just click on next. But this space system is showing you what are the resource transactions that will happen when you complete the work order. If you want to review, if you want to you know change the quantities, this is as per the work order definition. But when you actually did the production, if you spend more hours, then you can change that over here. So suppose uh, for LCD panel uh, resource, we expected in the work order to take 50 hours, but actually it took us 70 hours. So what you can do, I can change it to 70. So now you have a, you know, in, when you do the, uh, after the work order completions, you know, two months down the line or six months down the line, if you want to review the work order, then you can see the required quantities when you expected uh, to do the transform work order, when the 
manufacturing engineer or the operation manager thought about this transform work or they thought it will take 50 hours but actually when the operation the operators or the technicians did the job they spent 70 hours to, so to do that kind of reporting you can have uh, in oracle allows this flexibility where you can change the actual quantity from what initially you expected as the required quantity for that specific work order so change the quantity over here and then click on the next button system will show you a summary of all the transactions and you have the option of completing the work order so here you can see if you if it is uh, a lot or serial control this button should have been enabled because uh, it's not lot or serial control so all these are disabled uh, this is the number of quantities that we are going to complete and finally the sub inventory where we are going to complete it uh, we can select this as completed stores or wherever you want to complete it. And finally, if the uh, sub inventory is locator control, the locator button will also enabled and you can select the locator field over here. Nothing is required. So I'll just click on the save and close. That means the work order will be completed. All the resources will be transacted as well as the work order will be completed. So now you see in the review dispatch list, we don't have that work order. We can review the details of the work order by going to the manage work order form. So now we can search the work order. We can search with the item number or work order or any of these parameters because I know the work order number. So I'll search with the work order number. It is W002-2000. And one more important thing over here is that make sure that you select the status as all or at least completed because uh, by default system always picks this these three things, you know, on hold, release or unreleased. So if you want to see completed work orders, then you select completed or select all. Uh, then click on search button then system will show you the work order now you can see the status is completed because the work order is completed as well as here in the progress status you can see the green mark uh, check uh, checkbox that the work order is completed we want to review the item uh, as well as the resource transaction so i'll click on this item uh, sorry the work order number and uh, go to the operations tab and here you can see initially everything was red and zero but now we have already issued all the components so mis is zero one is showing as one one this one is showing minus one minus one because for this one we didn't do a uh, issue but we did a negative issue so whatever is the quantity it is issued out of weep to the inventory and for this one it is again plus one plus one everything is completed and similarly for the resources you can see the details over here for technician level two we expected 150 hours and we have already issued 150 hours but for assembly this uh, equipment lcd panel assembly equipment we expected 50 hours but actually we end up spending 70 hours so we uh, transacted 70 hours and that's why it is showing a negative that extra 20 hours have been uh, issued to this specific uh, material and if you want to review the details of this work order you can click on the history tab where system will show like when you did what uh, you know, status change from on release to release on this date this time and then it is changed from release to completed on this date this time by this user here you can review the various uh, details of the uh, of the work order and as you see the uh, the completed quantity is one and there is nothing remaining nothing is zero and when it was completed and if you want to review the transaction history you click on the transaction history system will show you all the transactions that is being done as part of this work order uh, we don't have an inspection history if you have done an inspection then you can review the inspection over here by clicking on the uh, inspection link so, so this space uh, shows all the pro production transactions that's uh, done as part of this work order so here you can see the work order number and then the operation in which this work order took place then the transaction date and what kind of transaction has been happened so if you start from the end like the material issue so here you can see to make the material sa02 we have issued sa01 as well as MIPUR001, it was a negative issue. So you see negative quantity over here. And we also had a positive issue for MIPUR002. So these are the two components which are positively issued. And this is the component which is negatively issued. Then this is another tr transaction called uh, product completion when, when you completed MISA02 and the quantity is 1. Similarly, we transacted resources, one resources for 70, another resource for 150. And this is just an operation completion. Uh, completion. It actually doesn't do anything. It's a kind of move transaction from one place to another place. Now, if you want to see the re uh, no, uh, other details for this transaction, so what you can do, you can go to view, click on view, then columns, and you can select the specific column you want to review. Or if you just click on show all, then system will show you all the other columns uh, that's used for this transaction, such as the num the inventory sub inventory which was used for uh, issue or for completions you can see over here and of course if you have lo locator or lot or serial details then you can see it over here uh, we don't have those details then the tr uh, operation transaction reference as well as resource transactions 
in inventory resource transaction so suppose you want to see the inventory transaction details for all these transactions because these transactions happened in inventory and these transactions happened in production so these are the references so if you want to review the detail for the material transaction then you can take this number and review it so let's say if you want to review what is the transaction behind this one let's take that transaction number copy this number and go back to inventory let me see if inventory is opened or i can open an inventory tab go back to tasks and review the transaction so click on these tasks and review inventory tra review completed transactions in this review completed uh, transaction form you can uh, search for the transaction in various uh, with various different criteria let's uh, say we want to review the specific transaction uh, this one so for this the item is issued as uh, mis01 so let's select uh, the transaction for mis01 and go back to review transactions and mis01 and then click on the search button So now here you can see this is uh, the transaction number 163527 that's the number we have over here 163527 the transaction number transaction reference number and if you click on uh, this transaction number then system will show you the details like the work order number for which the transaction happened and uh, what is the transaction quantity so it's a uh, we issued from store so the transaction quantity is uh, minus one because it was issued transaction of course if you see from the work order perspective it is pl plus one but if you think in terms of uh, inventory transaction it is an issue so it is a, a minus one from inventory perspective so this is the way in which you can review all the inventory transactions uh, so here you can see all the details uh, for the inventory transactions and you can also do that for all the all the components that is issued as part of this uh, work order so once that is done click on the done button and uh, go back so now we have reviewed all the transactions from from here and everything is completed fine the only other thing left is to check the on hand quantity so now the on hand quantity should have been changed from 91 to 82 because initially when we did started the transaction it was 9 against 2 now it is it should be 8 and uh, 2 sorry 9 1 now it should be 8 and 2 so to check the on hand, on hand value go to tasks and manage item quantities and again with the same criteria uh, first we need to change the organizations to mi uh, to 002 and then item number or item starts with as mi underscore sa so now as you can see the on hand has changed because we completed a new for mi sa 02 so the on hand has increased to 2 Similarly, the on-hand for MISH01 is reduced from 9 to 8. So now the only thing left is to transfer all these transactions, the inventory transaction and work order transaction from, from various modules to the costing module. So to transfer transactions, we can do in two ways. One, we can directly run this program from here, like transfer transaction from production to costing, or we can also manually run it in the, in the uh, transaction form. So let's run this one from here. So organization as all. Or maybe you'll just select a 002 and source system all and click on submit and once it is submitted we can review the the process details in monitor process form so now it should show us a new uh, process transfer transaction from production to costing and the other one is to transfer transaction from inventory to costing so i can run it from here transfer transaction from inventory to costing click on ok and then select uh, the cost organizations for which you want to transfer the transaction so it is in us so i'll select the us operations and click on submit it's done so now both the uh, transfer transactions programs are running and once both the transfer transactions programs are complete we can go to costing and run the create cost accounting distribution program to do that first go to costing i can you know navigate back from uh, the main page then you can view the details so first you have to select on costing icon then on cost accounting and here we need to run the create cost accounting distribution program first before we can review the details so scroll down and select create cost accounting distribution so to create any cost accounting distributions first you have to select a run control Again, all these details are part of uh, costing module, so I'm not going through the details, but you have to 
know what exactly you are doing so you have to select the us operations and then click on the schedule process but before uh, submitting it uh, let me sure let me make sure that the both the programs are completed yes both the uh, transactions are completed so now we can run the create cost accounting distribution so I'll click on the submit button and uh, sub, uh, the program is submitted again this will take a couple of minutes to complete and once uh, it is completed we can review the details so it will take some time to complete so in the meantime let me go back to review distribution form and enter all the criteria that we can review with so here I'll go to cost processing and then review cost accounting distributions uh, here we can search with various criteria but let's uh, make it simple and search with the date uh, there shouldn't be many transactions with uh, with current date so us operations and on or after let's say 14th of september or 15th of september and now let me see if uh, the program is complete or not monitor processes and the create uh, cost accounting distribution program is not complete so we can go back to the review cost accounting distribution and click on the search button to review the transactions so now we can see all the transactions have been completed uh, most of them are fully costed but something is not processed maybe the cost informations are missing but basically once the programs are run system will do all the all the costing as well as when you run the create accounting program system will create the, all the journals again these are parts of the cost account and i'm not going through the details uh, if you are interested then please check uh, the cost accounting training session but let's review just for one transaction suppose like this transaction we uh, work in process resource so here if you can see uh, system has created the overhead and resource so the we valuation got uh, debited with uh, 420 as part of the machine resource and there is some resource observation oh sorry some, some overhead calculations so system overhead is uh, system calculated the overhead as uh, 140 it might be you know 30 percent of uh, uh, the resource uh, resource so these two have been debited the evaluations and the corresponding resource observations are created and the, once the journals are created you can review the journal details over here but right now it will show you a message that you know the create accounting program hasn't run uh, similarly you can review the distributions uh, for all these accounts all these transactions that has happened as part of this work order and if you scroll to the right here you can see that these transactions hasn't happened for this specific work order okay so if i click on here it will show me the work order number like w 2000 so that was all about transfer work order end-to-end -end processes uh, next we'll go and review uh, rework work order